Hello and welcome to another edition of Personal Health and Fitness. I'm your host, Chad Marshak. We're in my kitchen today and we're going to make breakfast foods. People often overlook breakfast and it's really important. So the title of my show today is Breakfast Made Simple. If you don't have time to eat breakfast, you're really doing your body a uh, disservice because you're, if you think about it, breakfast, let's break down the word for a second. You're breaking the fast, all right? You've been fasting for eight to 10 hours the night before. Obviously, if you go to bed at, say, 10 o'clock and you had your last meal at maybe 7.30 and you get up the next day and at 6 o'clock, maybe you have time for breakfast at 7 a.m., 12 hours, all right, that your body has gone without food. So, since you've gone 12 hours, you've got all kinds of things going on with your body physiologically, meaning that your body needs calories to sustain itself. So, the best thing you could do for your body to get going in the day is to make sure that you have a nice healthy breakfast and that should consist of some type of a protein, some type of a basic carbohydrate and maybe a little fat to go along with it. But protein is definitely key to help get those muscles rolling again in the morning. So today we're going to make several things and we're going to start off with crepes. Crepes are one of my favorite things to eat in the whole world and I'm going to give you several different uh, examples as far as toppings that you can put on your crepes after you make them. Crepes are really basic and really easy to make. And actually what we're going to do today is because I'm not a big fan of white flour or wheat flour for that matter, we're going to make gluten-free crepes using a uh, garbanzo bean flour. And I'll show you what that looks like. After we make the crepes, we're going to go on and I'm going to show you how to make omelets. We're going to also make, show you how to make really simple oatmeal and we're going to finish it off by making a simple protein shake. Gluten-free. Uh, gluten is found typically in grass um, plants or plants such as wheat, uh, barley, rye, um, even oats, although has gluten in it, a lot of people can digest it. But you can buy gluten-free flour at um, most supermarkets now. I actually picked this up at Myers this morning. Um, this is made with garbanzo and fava beans. So beans, you can actually make flour out of the beans. I like to use rice flour too to make a lot of different uh, types of foods. I actually made a gluten-free pizza over the weekend for my kids. It was, it was excellent. But this is what it looks like. And if you have problems with digesting white flour, then by all means try gluten-free flour. So to start with the crepes, really, again, very basic, very easy to make. Really your main ingredients are going to be milk eggs and obviously flour all right and you're going to have also you can use sugar i like to use brown sugar and also sea salt so very basic so i'm going to grab all my ingredients that i need and to start off with i like to make uh, whisk the eggs first so i'm going to actually make a half serving for today a half serving would consist of a, one egg, and I like to use organic eggs, one and a half cups of milk, three quarters of a cup of flour, and I keep my flour actually in the refrigerator, about one teaspoon of organic light brown sugar, and about a quarter teaspoon of sea salt. All right, pretty basic. Grab my whisk. So this mixture, I've been making crepes actually for uh, most of my uh, life. I actually started making crepes for my father. I used to go visit him when I was a kid. And I tried my, uh, I really started cooking about that time. I used to make them every other weekend for him. Pretty good. So now we're going to add one and a half cups of milk. And there's one. And any type of milk is, is uh, fine as far as percent fat. If you want to use 1% or 2%, um, a lot of people don't want the extra fat. Skim milk, skim milk is fine. I like to actually compromise and use 1%, which I find it's a little bit richer than skim milk. Just a little bit more. 
and that's one and a half cups. And give that a little whisk. Okay, and now I'm going to grab my flour and add the dry ingredients. So, real simple, if you're basically you have it's a two to one ratio of milk to flour, okay? So, if I want to make a larger uh, batch of crepes, I'm going to add, say, th three cups of milk, one and a half cups of flour. But one and a half cups of milk and three quarters cups of flour will actually give you about uh, nine or ten, ten inch round crepes. And for my kids, who are teenage boys and like to eat, that's about right. They eat about five crepes a piece. That's one and a half cups. If you like crepes that are slightly thinner, then maybe you want to put a couple additional tablespoons of milk in it, which is going to make it a little bit uh, runnier and really thin out the crepe. And then I'm going to add about a quarter teaspoon of sea salt, roughly. I'm not a big fan of white sugar. Um, I like brown sugar. It's easy enough to cook with, and you can even buy organic brown sugar. So I keep it in a plastic bag. Sometimes it's a little hard and crumbly. If that's the case, then just grab the chunks and squish them between your fingers and add it to your mix. Some people may like them a little bit sweeter. I don't find that a teaspoon of brown sugar to this size, uh, this batch of crepes, adds a ton of sweetness, just a hint. My kids like sweet things, as do most kids. I'll get my fire going. Preheat my pan a little bit. I mix this up. And I typically will cook the crepes. Uh, I use butter, real butter. I think um, margarine is an, is an absolute crock because it uh, has a lot of trans fats in it. Hydrogenated oils are, are not a good, a good thing. Man-made fats are typically no good from a health perspective. Don't worry about getting every little clump out of your crepe mixture. All right, they cook up um, quite nicely in the pan. A lot of people are concerned about those little extra clumps in your, in your mixture, but it's not a big deal. I'll grab my butter. But really, to crank out 10 crepes doesn't take much time, maybe maybe 10 minutes, about a minute of crepe. And usually what I look for when I'm cooking the crepe that I can, that all of the uh, liquid on top as the crepe actually forms and cooks, isn't, uh, there isn't, shouldn't be any liquid typically left. That spatula. And you'll see the edges around the side uh, brown ever so slightly. Now my oldest son doesn't like anything to be burnt. Burnt to him is just maybe a hint of brown around the edge, so I have to really watch the crepes. My youngest son actually likes uh, things cooked, uh, especially his crepes, just a little bit extra, almost a crispy texture on the outside, and that's fine too. So my pan, once I get it nice and hot, I'll add the mixture, the crepe batter. It should be fairly runny. I like to use a fairly high heat. If it's too low, the, crepe, the crepes tend to take too long to cook. So maybe turn your burner up to uh, three quarters of the way, not all the way up to high, but certainly not at a medium heat. So a medium high heat is fine. You can see what the mixture looks like. Crepes are kind of a, a um, poor man's version of a pancake because you, it's not quite as thick as far as the batter is concerned. You can hear the sizzle as I put the mixture on. And I just kind of, in the pan, I may just kind of roll it around a little bit till it fills the sides. And I'll let that cook. Again, it just takes maybe a minute to a minute and a half max, depending on how high your heat is. Usually between the crepes, each crepe, I'll add a little additional butter. Now, when I pull the crepe out of the pan, some people will put additional butter on the crepe. I typically don't. I use just enough. Butter to kind of coat the pan so it makes it easier to flip. 
just like pancakes, sometimes you may want to take the edges and kind of push them down just a little bit. So as I push here, it kind of frees up the edge and allows me to flip it. Some people have actual crepe pans. This is just a 10 inch omelet pan. So it's a multifaceted pan and you can make a lot of different things with this. So the crepe's starting to form nicely. Especially when you cook the, the initial side when you pour the batter in, the, the bottom side, it takes a little bit longer to cook. And once I flip this baby, it's just going to take a matter of maybe 15, 20 seconds before it's actually completely done. And I'll flip it. I love the smell of crepes. My kids, when they wake up, especially on the weekends, they can smell them when they come out of their bedrooms because that's what, usually what I'm doing. I'm making crepes. So this crepe is actually finished now. And you can either roll it in the pan, roll it up, really simple, and take it off or roll it. You can see this is what it looks like. Throw it on the pan, it's good to go. Just going to make a couple of more, maybe four crepes or so. Not this entire batch. And then I'll show you some basic toppings that you can make. I've got some fun toppings that just take minutes. And if you're actually timing how long it takes me to do this, if you're busy during the weekday, you saw it to make up this crepe mixture. It took a matter of, oh, maybe two minutes. And for each crepe, it's taken a minute to a minute and a half. So if you have 15, 20 minutes in the morning, really simple to make a batch of, say, 10 crepes or so for your family. And what's cool about using a, a gluten-free uh, flour, especially made from a bean or a rice mixture, typically you're going to have a higher concentration of protein, which is really nice. If you want to get a big protein punch, plus the milk and the egg, obviously, is going to add a little bit higher protein kick, too. Okay. Sometimes I'll just lift up the edge just a little bit with my fingers, and that's fine. But again, these crepes are really chock full of protein, really healthy carbs, and minimal fat. And they stick with you too. Okay, this one's just about done. I'm going to roll it up in the pan. And let's make one more real quick. But some of the toppings that I like to use for my crepes are, I love to use cherries. I like to use fresh strawberries, and we actually have some today. I'll show you what those look like. And as this one cooks, we'll start getting our stuff ready to go for the additional toppings. I've got cherries. Excuse me, I don't have cherries. I actually have strawberries today. I pre-sliced some strawberries. I'll show you what they look like, what this banana is going to look like with some of the brown sugar mixture. I like pure maple syrup. If you're actually going to put them on your crepes, it's great. Um, I'm not a big fan of uh, Aunt Jemima syrup or any of the other store syrups that you might see. It's Log Cabin happens to be another one, and plus all the major stores have their brand, but Typically what you find is that they're full of high fructose corn syrup. So the, the, uh, the, the corn syrup sweeteners, I'm not a big fan of those. They really tend to uh, jack your insulin level sky high. And um, I, like, uh, I like, preferably I like fruit if I have to choose something. Sometimes I'll just eat these plain with a little bit of butter on top. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and make the brown sugar and banana mixture. Really basic. I'm going to take maybe just a smidge of butter, put it in the pan. You can hear it sizzle nice and hot. I'll get that going. Now I'll grab my brown sugar, sprinkle a little bit of the brown sugar right in the middle of the pan. Brown sugar is a little bit hard. Maybe a 
tablespoon roughly of the brown sugar. I'll take my banana. This is simple, really simple. Cut up the banana. This has to be done relatively quick, like so. Stir fry it. And maybe I'll add a little bit more butter if I think I need a smidge. Again, we didn't add much butter to begin with. The aroma from the brown sugar and the banana smells outstanding. Kind of like a banana's foster, but without the liquor. And that's it for that. You can see what it looks like. That took a whole minute. And I'll add the bananas over the top to say one. So if you want multiple mixtures, you've got it, or multiple toppings, you've got it. And then, if you want to make it really easy, a nice topping would be to take like a jam. These are organic bilberries, and I'll take maybe a teaspoon roughly, like so. Just put it over the top, and I just smear it. Like so, so you've got three different crepes right here with strawberries, bilberries, and a banana mixture with brown sugar and butter. And believe me, they look as good, they taste rather as good as they look. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the omelets. And I'm gonna kinda, of, since we don't have tons of time, I'm gonna show you how to make a really basic breakfast staple, and that's oatmeal. Clean out my pan real quick, we only have one. The show today again is breakfast made simple. And let me tell you, it's pretty basic stuff. Omelets. Easy, easy. Obviously you need eggs for omelets. My basic uh, recipe for making a good omelet is instead of milk, I like to use a little bit of water. I find the consistency of water is much better than using milk. Some people make an omelet with with milk added to the eggs. I don't like them that way and I watched a cooking show years ago when I was a kid and the chef said never use milk only use water and I thought hmm, let me try it that way because I had been making omelets too for years and I like the consistency of water better than eggs. If you're making a big omelet and say you have issues with cholesterol then omit a couple of the yolks. Not a big deal. I'm just going to make a real basic three egg omelets. So I've got three whole eggs. Again, I'm a fan of organic eggs. And you can add anything you want to an omelet. I mean, an omelet, you don't have to limit it to just cheese. Or um, you can add anything you want. Now, I like to add onions. I like to add mushrooms. I like to add, sometimes I'll add a little sausage. Sometimes I'll add a little bacon. Sometimes I'll add spinach. Sometimes I'll add all of the above. So it's really not a big deal as far as what you want to add. I've even, even added ground beef, potatoes, sweet potatoes, you name it. Okay, I'm just going to mix this up a little bit and then I'm going to add a little bit of water. Maybe for three eggs, maybe a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half or so. If you want to add pepper to your eggs or even sea salt, that's fine. I typically, when I'm making my omelets, I like to cook with olive oil as far as my oil or coconut oil, either or, or even sometimes real butter. But never margarine. I don't like cooking sprays. Okay, and I'm getting my pan going. I'm just going to grab a little olive oil. I'm actually also going to get my oatmeal going. Get the back burner going. I'm 
and my olive oil. Let that heat just for a second. Get my oatmeal going. And for oatmeal, if I want to make a, say, three quarter cup serving of oatmeal or a half cup serving of oatmeal, what I'll do, it's usually a two to one ratio of water to oats. So I just added one cup of water. I'm going to bring that to a boil. So we're cooking two things now, the omelets and the oatmeal. And once the water starts boiling, you can add your oats and cook them. I'm just going to add, I've got some uh, onions here, some red onions that I sliced, that I chopped earlier. Add the onions, my cheese ready, and I also like to add spinach and mushrooms. So today's omelet basically is going to consist of four things besides the eggs, spinach, mushroom, onions, and cheese. A few mini bell of mushrooms, get those going. And the last thing you want to do, you kind of want to pre-cook the or at least stir fry the onions and the mushrooms first for a couple of minutes. Maybe a minute and a half, two minutes, if your heat's nice and hot. And then add the spinach. Some people like to add all their condiments to their omelets after they cook the, the eggs and maybe add them in the middle. I'd rather cook, and I find it easier, especially if I'm pressed for time, where I add all the ingredients first and then I pour the egg mixture over the top. It just saves me time. It's, uh, I find that things cook a little bit better. Just going to add a smidge more olive oil. Okay, my onion mushroom mixture is about Ready to go. I'm going to add the spinach, and the spinach takes just a matter of seconds, maybe 30 seconds to kind of cook down. And some people like, it takes a lot of spinach. If you've ever just stir fried spinach, it seems like it takes a pound of spinach to cook us one serving because it cooks down pretty much just all water. So my spinach is basically good to go. I'm noticing here that my pan for my oatmeal is almost ready. So now I'll take the egg mixture and I'll add it. I'll just pour it right on top of the mushroom spinach onion mixture. You can hear that sizzle pretty well. And breakfast made simple. This is all pretty simple stuff, isn't it? And let that cook. That might take three minutes or so to cook. Now I'm going to grab my oatmeal. I like to buy the oatmeal in the big giant canister. I'm going to add about a half cup to the water. My water is boiling. making a mess over here. I guess I'll have to clean up later. Let's stir this. And ideally you want to set your timer, oh, maybe five to eight minutes. So we don't have a ton of time. You may need to stir your oatmeal a couple of times during the cooking process. Some people like to nuke their oatmeal. I prefer cooking it. Just trying to get my egg mixture on the top to cook. And a lot of people fear flipping an omelet. Don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. If it falls apart, it's going to be okay in the pan. Just kind of rearrange things so it's in a nice circular pattern. This is ready to go. You can see what it looks like. Once your oatmeal is boiling, you may need to turn the, the heat down just a smidge, maybe a medium to a medium high. 
Um, these eggs are just about ready to roll and I'm going to grab a knife here and add a little bit of razor sharp cheddar cheese. This is raw cheese. That means it hasn't been pasteurized and I prefer that. So I'll take my cheese, take a couple of slices on the top. And it melts pretty quickly because uh, obviously the eggs are still pretty hot. And I'll flip my omelet on the top. And I'll fold it over. Flip it onto my pan. And that's basically what it looks like. Really simple. Well, the oatmeal, I'll tell you what, it's not quite finished. And since we're running out of time today, Shoot, I was hoping they, it would finish in time, but I didn't time everything just right. But if we want to make a protein shake, again, you don't have a lot of time. If you want to count down with me, I'm going to fill this up about with 10, 12 ounces of water. And I love it when people say, I don't have time to eat. Well, you know what? If you have time enough to grab a, a banana, which takes you about five seconds, and this is taking about, what, 15 seconds to make this protein shake? Not a big deal. Time should never be an excuse as far as taking care of your body. If you've got a shaker bottle, throw 10, 12 ounces of water in there. I put one scoop of protein. This is about uh, of whey protein, about 24 grams of protein. Shake it up. It took what, 20 seconds, and you're ready to go. So we've got your omelet. You've got your crepes. I mean, these are two ideas. You could have omelets. You could have crepes and omelets together, one or the other. If you wanted to have a protein shake and oatmeal, really simple. My oats are almost done, but that, I showed you how to make it. Once it's all cooked and ready to go, let it set for a couple of minutes and you can be ready to down it. We're out of time. I want to thank you again for joining me on another edition of Personal Health and Fitness. If you have any questions about what we do at Body Symmetry, again, check out our website at bodysymmetry.com. Hello, Quinn and Riley. Thanks again. Until next time, I'm your host, Chad Marshak.